Hi, Leo. Welcome to your December reading. We're at the last month of the year. I'm sure a lot of people are celebrating this fact. Um, okay, so astrology stuff for you guys is pretty interesting because we have Saturn and Jupiter moving from Capricorn to Aquarius in just a couple of weeks. And what does that mean? So Saturn will be in Aquarius for the next two and a half years. And you're going to learn a lot about your love life and the relationships that you hold, the partnerships that you have, how you're interacting with them, how maybe you interacted differently with them in the past, and you want to change that. There's something about the relationships that you want to switch up. It's not going to be the same after two and a half years because you're, you're evolving. You're learning new ways of interacting with people. Um, Jupiter is going to fly through Aquarius for about six months. It's going to go into Pisces for a couple months and then retrograde back into Aquarius. And that's going to give you also a boost on your relationships. Um, and when it gets into Pisces, it's going to be this, um, you know, how am I sharing myself with the world? How am I sharing myself and all of the blessings that I've received through all of this? And I know it's a little bit difficult sometimes to think of uh, the lessons as blessings. <laughs> I know that that can be a little bit of a painful process to think about that. But if you really sit down and you see what you've learned this year in 2020, a lot of it you'll recognize that um, everything that had that happened, everything had to happen. It had to switch up your routine. It had to change the way you were doing things so that you could evolve, so you could elevate, so you could make it better for yourself and for others. And now there's going to be a really big focus on um, where, you know, where you might have been not showing up for relationships in the past. This is going to show you exactly how to do that. Saturn is, he's the father of time, so it's not going to be an overnight process. Um, there will probably be some painful realizations through it, um, but what lesson, like if all the lessons that we had to learn were easy, we would probably never learn them. We would just keep going along on the hamster wheel over and over and over again, expecting different results when nothing was going to happen. Um, we also have uh, all of this Sagittarius energy, the Sagittarius season, the sun is in Sagittarius, Mercury's in Sagittarius. Venus is quickly moving that direction and it's going to trine all of your energy and it's going to give you a lot of mojo. You're probably going to feel pretty fired up this month, probably have a lot of things that you would like to get accomplished. It's going to be, um, you know, really sparking and uh, kind of a catalyst to feeling passionate again, feeling really good about the things that are going on around you and getting super passionate about all of your stuff. And um, the Sagittarius eclipse that's happening on the 14th uh, will probably reveal, um, for some of you, is probably it might even reveal your whole purpose on what you're doing here, but the things that you that you truly want to accomplish and, and you really have that like fire in your belly the things that you want to do, this eclipse is going to sort of bring that out into the open and be like, all right, now what are you going to do with it? So pay attention to what you're losing and pay attention to what you're gaining right now because a lot of the stuff that you have to lose is just making space so the universe can bring all of the good, good things for you, right? Like that's the truth. So here we go. Let's look at the cards. If you would like to get a six-month reading with me, I still have some six-month forecast readings available. Um, just a few spots left. I think there might even only be like 10 spots left on my calendar um, for those readings. Ooh, yummy. Really liking this one, Leo. Here we go. Okay, if this is how we're going to do the reading today, sure. Um, okay, so <laughs> I love this because my Mercury's in Leo and my Jupiter's in Leo and they're conjunct. And so that's why, like, I can say things out loud and they just sort of come into manifestation and they, that I feel like that's, that's what you guys are doing this month. You guys are 
literally saying things out loud and it's coming into fruition. So be very, very careful about the things that you're saying for sure, because you're in super manifestation mode. Like you can easily trigger something negative happening. Like you can sabotage all of this if you want to. Um, but I don't think that you are. I think that you're in a better place. I think you're in a better mindset. Maybe not all of you are, but it feels like you're a little bit more in control than you have been in past months. Almost, and maybe not like that big sigh of relief. That's not here quite yet, but it does feel like a softening has happened and like um, uh, you're ready. You're just ready for the next level of things, which is pretty awesome. Okay. <clears throat> Man, did you want to have love on your menu for December? Did you want to have a little bit of control? Did you want to have... Um, maybe some long-term plans solidified because that all looks really good. So yeah, anyway, so the six months <laughs> forecast readings are available and I am holding the manifestation class that I held in November. I'm, t I'm having it again in December because it was so well received that I want, you know, to, to teach it again. Like it's amazing. I'll probably teach it maybe even again. I don't even know. Um, or add it into something else. But if you missed it in November, Come join us for the December class on December 14th, which is the same day as the solar eclipse. Okay, two of cups, <clears throat> ten of pentacles, the magician, see what I mean? <laughs> Six of swords, the emperor, and the four of pentacles. You could be dealing with an Aries energy, maybe a Virgo or a Gemini also. Um, but it really feels like there's a sense of, you know what it is that you want to manifest into your life. You want love. You want, you want long-term prosperity and stability in your life. You want this um open flow of energy where you can create and you can manifest and you can um just flow with everything that's going on in your world and i think that it, you're starting to feel with this emperor and four of pentacles you're starting to feel like you have a like a hold on what it is that you really want to start what what you want to bring into fruition what you want to create right um it's very interesting though because I feel like there's a fear. This four of pentacles makes me feel like there's a fear of maybe losing it all. If you just loosen your grip a little bit on some things, um, if you maybe like slack off a little bit and you're a little bit lazier than you normally would be, um, it feels like you could possibly just really, you know, like lose everything if you loosen up your grip a little bit. And I, and that fear, that, that fear, it's not the loosening of, of your grip. It's not like letting go or releasing things. It's the fear that will sabotage it, right? Because in fact, when you allow yourself to surrender to the energy and you're not so crunched up, right? Trying to hold on to everything all at once. When you allow yourself to surrender, that's actually having more control. Like you think you're in control when you're sitting here and holding on to everything really, really tightly. You see? Let's look. Let's clarify and let's see what the Two of Cups is. I love this. If you're meeting somebody new or you're manifesting wanting to meet somebody new, one of the things that I'm teaching in that workshop is about how to embody the feeling, how to embody the emotion. Um, you could be dealing with an earth sign, possibly a Virgo. Queen of Pentacles on the Two of Cups. This person's very grounded. It doesn't even have to be an earth sign. It could just be somebody that feels like they hold you in place. Um, it feels like this person uh, keeps you steady when you're a little bit off kilter. Ten of Pentacles. It feels like this person is somebody that you can build a life with. And create with Let's see 10 of pentacles 
The Ten of Pentacles is something that happens in time. It's something that is developed in, it's a very Saturnian, very Capricorn kind of card because when we get the Ten of Pentacles, we've already made all the plans. We've already planted the seeds. We've already decided this is the way we want it to look. But we have to remember that the universe is also involved in this decision making. So sometimes if we come across like, this is how I want everything to be planned and something shifts in our world and it's almost like, okay, well, even though like it's great that there was a plan and there was a thought process behind that plan, but when it comes down to it, are we being open for the universe to work within this plan as well? And I think that might be the hardest part. It's like, we want what we want. We want it to look the way we want it to look, right? What if that's not right? What if it's great to have a general idea and really have big dreams and open yourself up to all of the possibilities of what that stability will look like, but when it comes down to it at the end of the day, we have to allow ourselves to flow through the energy with that two of pentacles. Because if you're sitting there second guessing yourself constantly or vacillating for, for a long time, like, I don't know what to do next to make this happen. I don't know what to do in order to bring this into fruition, right? If that's what you're doing, then it's going to be a never ending, like back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And you can really go through that cycle all over again if you wanted to. Let's see what the magician. Oh yes, <laughs> oh yes. And see, here's the thing, is that Saturn moving, Saturn and Jupiter moving into Aquarius, there's the star. This is gonna shine a whole bunch of lights because <laughs> Saturn rules Aquarius too, if you didn't know that. Saturn is, doesn't just rule Capricorn, but, but he also rules Aquarius, just in a different kind of way. It's a more open, it's a more, it's a, it's a more flowy kind of way. It's not so strict, right? It's more um, effort of time for all involved and not just like one person involved, right? Um, it's not about the structure, it's about the community. And so when we're manifesting things in life, we have to remember that it's, it's not just about what we want, it's about what's going to be best for everybody involved, right? So if you're trying to manifest a queen of pentacles into your life, you don't want to do it in a way that kind of like messes up, you know, messes with their energy as well. You want to make sure that you're not trying to force it because the star here is telling you that the things that you're manifesting in December are very destined for you. And it's going to be um, like a refresh, like the reset button, right? It'll be a renewal and, a, and, a, and a, um, a healing process, the manifestations that you're bringing in. And a lot of times when we're trying to manifest, we'll be triggered into healing because it's like, are you absolutely ready to have this manifestation? If you want to have a healthy, loving relationship and be grounded and feel good within that relationship, you have to make sure you're not going to project all of your fears and insecurities and pain and heartache onto that person. So a lot of times when we're manifesting, things can come up to trigger us. And I feel like, I feel like that may be the case if you try and control the way that this goes, because you're like, but I don't want to feel the negative stuff. I just want the good stuff. That makes sense, but it's all good stuff. Even when it hurts. I know. <laughs> I get it. We have um, Justice, I almost said Libra, so you might be dealing with a Libra energy or an Aquarius. We have Justice on the Six of Swords. That Six of Swords is moving from rough waters to calmer waters. So there, it, this, this is a balance of your wits. This is a balance of your mind that's coming in. And if you're having a hard time balancing your mind, you know that I'm gonna tell you to meditate. You know that I'm going to tell you to take some deep breaths. Just five minutes out of your day. Just, just relax into the moment where you are right now. That's going to bring you balance because really that's where you want to be. You're craving the balance so that you can just get on with life already. You know? And it's been such a process to get there. 
So, the Emperor. Ooh, yeah. You have to change the way, you have to transform the way you uh, are trying to control this. There has to be a surrender. Oh, surrender to the love. Surrender to the soft parts, right? You don't have to, it doesn't have to be like the emperor. It doesn't have to be harsh. It doesn't have to be dictated. Um, the death card comes in and says, you know, allow all of the things to burn away so that you can be that phoenix rising up from the ashes. Allow yourself to surrender and transform things because you know you're not the same person as you were last year at this time. You don't want the same things. Four of Pentacles, holding on to everything so tightly out of fear of losing it is a surefire way to lose it. I'm just saying. Oof, okay. So you're holding on to, we have the Nine of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck. So we have the Queen of Cups, and you showed up, Queen of Wands, on the Four of Pentacles. There's something about that Queen of Cups that you can't let go of. That was heavy. There's something about that Queen of Cups you can't let go of. And um, I, I honestly want to say, I feel like you can't save them. Like, I feel like this needs to be something. It, it's almost as if you are holding yourself back by holding on to them. You got to let go of the past, right? There has to be an elevation. There has to be a leveling up. And that's what you're trying to manifest. But this is that thing where you're going to be triggered into healing whatever it is that Queen of Cups brought to you so that you can move forward, so that you can manifest something that's better, that's something bigger, that's something broader. Nine of Pentacles, Knight of Wands, Oh, Knight of Pentacles and the Empress. All right. Ooh, and there you are again. King of Wands. Ooh, and there you are again. The Lovers. Okay. So, um, Nine of Pentacles, Knight of Wands, Knight of Pentacles. Don't try to rush your abundance. Um, that Knight of Wands... If you're feeling a little bit chaotic, there needs to be a centering. Like you really need to allow yourself to surrender and center in December because I feel like your chaos could actually bring a lot more harm than if you're not focused. Like I feel like there needs to be a focus. Um, and if that focus means that you're just focusing on your own creations and your own self and you're, that's what you're passionate about, that's what I want to see you doing. If this eclipse comes up on the 14th and it says, you know, all right, Leo, this is the stuff that we're going to be focusing on. That's what I want you to do. I don't want you to like start doing six other projects because you feel like you have to. You see? And allowing yourself to get settled within that energy and create from that space of not being chaotic, but being um, centered and grounded and aligned, right? Like there's this alignment that's occurring with you. Yes, the lovers can be a relationship that you're trying to manifest, but if you want to manifest this relationship, that alignment comes first. Because if you're out of alignment, you're going to manifest something that's going to come in and heal you. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know any other way to say that. Like if you're out of alignment and you're not emotionally um stable or emotionally mature right and you you haven't gone through the healing process of healing all the past wounds this person's going to come in and you guys are going to project onto each other and trigger each other into healing i always just think it's better to do it on your own first right like stop settling 
and level up. It's out there, and I know that you're just waiting for it to happen. Yeah? All right, my friends. Uh, come join us on the memberships. We would love to have you there. It's a wonderful family community. Um, we're actually going to be doing some one question readings this weekend. Um, just kind of like get together and chat and like I haven't been able to just like sit down and chat with the members in a while. So we're going to be doing that this weekend. Um, we're going to be doing, oh, all of the general forecast readings that I'll be doing. The members actually get the second half of the year by being a member. They don't have to pay for it or like extra for it. Um, so yeah, it's really great. It's really fun. There are love readings monthly and daily energy updates. So yeah, discord access anyways, would love to have you. Um, all of the information to get a six month forecast or to sign up for that manifesting workshop is in the description box below. I love you guys. Have a wonderful holiday season. I hope you're all doing well, um, or better than maybe earlier this year. Take good care of yourselves. I'll see you soon. Bye.